guys. It has been a while. I have had a crazy week. I have not been able to do anything this week. So, I am a bit behind. This is the Take No Prisoners review. I will have the One Night Stand review, because I'm sure most of you, that's what you want to see anyways. It's bad. I'm going to get this first. Um, as We're going to do this one, and then... I'll do the One Night Stand review after I've actually seen One Night Stand. Haven't seen it yet, so can't really comment on it. Um, but I will have seen that later today. I'm, I'm loading this up pretty early on Monday morning, so it'll probably be. I'll probably load it up early on Tuesday morning. So there we go. I've just been really busy um, with a lot of stuff, so I haven't been able to do a lot of videos on this stuff. So there you go. Uh, let's see, and I also, just so you guys know, something to keep look for, I went ahead and I booked the rest of uh, the TNA pay-per-views to Bound for Glory, and so I'm going to do that just because, in my opinion, you can go out there and you can fantasy book one pay-per-view, but I think the real challenge is doing pay-per-view after pay-per-view after pay-per-view, and then you start to see where... Um, things get a little more complicated and all of that, but anyway, let's get started with this Ring of Honors Take No Prisoners pay-per-view. This began airing on Friday, um, which I didn't get to see it till probably late Friday because um, I wasn't able to see it live, unfortunately. Uh, this was taped a couple of months ago. Uh, they will be airing more pay-per-views after this. They upped their pay-per-view deal. I'm sure most of you already know that. And it looks like, just from the way they're taping it, it looks like now it will be about a month wait, which I think will work a lot better, in my opinion. Um, because even though a lot of the stuff had happened so far in advance that you kind of forget about it, I, I think with a month wait, there's still a lot of buzz about a lot of the matches, particularly a lot of the very good matches that usually get on a on pay-per-view. Another thing about this pay-per-view, damn, there were a lot of matches on this pay-per-view. There really were. I'll get to that later, though. Um, let's get started. Uh, we had a four-corner survival match to start out the show. The winner gets a shot at Nigel McGuinness in the main event. Um, it was Claudio Castanoli, Tyler Black, uh, Go Shinazaki, and Delirious. Kind of a weird grouping, I think a lot of people would think, um, with Claudio and Go probably being the only two guys that really make any sense. But, um, this was a very fun match and a very good opener. And what you want from an opener got the fans into it. It was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. Um, really good match. I, I'd give it three and a, three and a quarter stars. Um, Tyler Black won with a Phoenix Splash, which was nice to see, as this pay-per-view was really geared around Tyler Black and trying to make Tyler Black into a, a main eventer. And I think both TNA and, Ring, and uh, WWE could take notes on this because they basically, Ring of Honor one night took one guy and made him into legitimately one a guy that I could see drawing for them. So in one night they did that with no fanfare, no real build up. Did it pretty much one night. Um, that pretty much is the way you do it, folks. And my hat goes off to Ring of Honor for that. Uh, like I said, this was a good match. It was good comment. There was good chemistry between all of the guys. I, I will say this: Go and Delirious have some funky chemistry. I don't know what it is. But those two guys just seem to have a lot of fun with each other and work really good with each other, which is kind of an odd pairing, but there you go. Uh, then from there, we started getting Age of the Fall segments from backstage. This was kind of odd, I felt. It wasn't as good as some of the stuff that we'd seen. It was was I think it got the message apart, but came off more like a, as a TV type of angle, type of spot, which I didn't really like. I, I think the Hangman 3... The Hangman 3 stuff from the early pay-per-views was a lot better than this, in my opinion. Um, not that it was bad, but it just didn't really work. And the other thing that I will gripe about this pay-per-view is that you know they fixed the they fixed the audio, they fixed um, they fixed the graphics. Everything production-wise was really good, except for one thing: the lighting. The lighting was kind of sucky on this pay-per-view. Hopefully, that's the next thing they fix. And then everything production-wise, I think, should be pretty well, except for the not being live, of course. But get to that at another point, I guess. 
Uh, the next match was Kevin Steen versus Roderick Strong. This was this was a pretty good match, I would say. Nothing that you know go out of your way to uh, to see. Um, I thought it was fun. Uh, Steen was able to do more of his comic comic shtick than he normally gets to do. I'm um, in Ring of Honor, and uh, good two three quarter three and a quarter star match. There you go. Next, we had the Briscoes versus the Age of the Fall and a street fight. Um, basic Briscoes, Age of the Fall type of match. Good spots, bloody, um, good fun. You, you could see intensity there, which was good. Uh, the Age of the Fall members, uh, you know, w w was a bit of an odd pairing, I felt, because it was Joey Mercury and Necro Butcher. Um, but I, I think it still works. Joey Mercury, I, I think didn't really help this match very much, but Necro went out there and did what Necro did. So, eh, what you gonna do? And there was one pretty pretty good spot, I would say. Uh, next, we had uh, Eric Stevens versus Brent Albright. This would have been a match that I was actually looking kind of forward to seeing, because I like both of these guys a lot, and this kind of fell flat. Um, definitely the worst match of the night, though that's saying, that's not saying much, because everything on here was pretty good. Uh, you know, two and a quarter star match. It was just kind of flat, in my opinion. Next, we had a match taped from uh, Orlando from, uh, I think this was on Super Court of Honor 3. I think this is where they taped this match. You know, I don't like it that they do that, but I'm sure they had their reasons. I wish they would get away from doing this. This is another thing I don't like about the pay-per-views. But it was a good match. This is one of those matches where, you know, I always talk, usually about Ring of Honor pay-per-views, I always bring up the fact that this is a match that TNA should, this is what the X Division should be. And very much, this was one of those matches. Good three-star match. A lot of fun. The last, I would say, five kind of spots were just crazy in this. Uh, next, we had Brian Danielson versus Austin Aries. Um, the continuization of their feud. This was a good, solid mat wrestling match. Everything made sense. This is more of along the lines of what I think Angle and Joe should have been at lockdown in a cage. I think it would have worked better. I think this worked better than Angle and Joe. Um, that's just my opinion. I wasn't big on that match, as a lot of you know. But uh, still very good, excellent, just just really good. These guys were, you know, these. I think the world of both of these guys. So uh, a good four and a quarter star match. A match that started off good and just kept and just kept going was just solid from start to end. Unlike the main event, um, Nigel McGuinness versus Tyler Black, this match also was four and a quarter stars, but for a different reason because the match just kind of built. It had more of just a slow build where it was kind of just like, well, Nigel McGuinness and then with Tyler Black, whoop to do. Even though, as I said during the night, they did all of these skits to kind of build up Tyler Black. They they also focused a lot on. Um, the Age of the Fall a little bit, and that didn't work out so well. And the Tyler Black stuff didn't, you know, some of it was kind of cheesy, I will agree. But uh, overall, um, this was an excellent match where it just kept building to where the fans were just so into it by the end of this match that it was pretty amazing. Uh, and again, another four and a quarter star match. Both of these excellent matches, as good as anything you will probably see on a normal basis from uh, WWE or Ring of Honor. This was a very good pay-per-view, and I didn't even talk about the Larry Sweeney segment, which I thought was good, but not as good as, you know, it probably could have been, and the fact of the matter that they had, I believe, seven matches on this card, and a two-hour uh, pay-per-view, and were able to, to cram everything in there and still give you quality wrestling just kind of amazes me, um, just really does. This was very good. I would recommend anybody going out there and picking this up. Um, because of the production stuff and because of the really the the more the, the skits and that sort of stuff, which usually I like from Ring of Honor, but they just didn't work for me this time. Uh, I'd give this an 8.25. Um, it probably, match-wise, probably deserves a little bit more than that, but taking in the, the non-match stuff, uh, you know, it kind of brings it down a little bit, in my opinion. This is the first pay-per-view where I think it was pretty. It was, it was a little bit more glaring 
um, because it was just the lighting. The lighting just was so bad at some point. It just kind of really, and the backstage stuff just didn't have the intensity that I think it needed. But overall, great pay-per-view. Definitely recommend anybody going and checking it out, having a good time with it. I'm out. Later.